Hey there, Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe. In this video, we're going to look at what's new in Photoshop CS6 Beta. There's a lot of new stuff. The first thing you're going to see is a brand new interface. It's nice and dark and much more visually appealing than the old one. There's a lot of new things. So what we're going to do right now is just we're going to jump in a little bit. We're going to do a high level overview. So come on, let's go have a look. So here we have Photoshop CS6 Beta. Let's have a look and see what's different. Obviously, the interface has changed. We've got this nice dark interface. Now we have different options. If you don't like it, we can change it. We're just going to go under the Preferences, which will be Edit Preferences on Windows. On Mac, it's just Preference. And then we're going to choose Interface. So it would be Photoshop Preferences on Mac. And here's our different options here. We can go to the really dark. And we can go, this is the default, which I kind of like. We can change the different sizes and colors here. So we go here, and this is more like the traditional light color if you prefer that. So let me just click, and we're just going to kind of keep it there. And we can see we've got other different kind of options here that we can change. The standard, we can get make this dark around the edge. I, I per personally like to have a medium gray because that it doesn't interfere too much with my work. And you can see we can change every single one of these things. So that's pretty nice. We've got our toolbar. It's just the same. We can double that up or go down. You'll see there's a new few tools in here. If we go down, uh, we see we've got our quick selection. Things like that are normal. But then we go under our, our eyedropper. We've got 3D material eyedropper, color sampler. We've got some different options here. Uh, the color sampler obviously is not new. That's been around a while. We've got our sampling ring. Just like before, we can change it now. But one of the things we can do is we can sample all layers the current layer or current layer and below. And we can also do all layers or current current and below with no adjustments, which is great. So it ignores the adjustment layers and we can actually get our colors that we want accurately. So that's really, really useful. Um, you'll see there's some other tools there that we're, we're not gonna get into right now. Let's jump over to the layers panel. I'm just gonna pull that up. One of the things you'll notice right now as if we've got different kinds of layers that we can filter by. Notice I've got a lot of layers going on in here. And so we can filter them by the images here, when we've got all images. We can look at the ones we've got adjustments on, and we can have those filtered together. We can just look at the adjustments, or we can look at the adjustments with the uh, pixel layers. Now, we can also hide and show these. Like, let's have a look here. We go down, and we can, we can see... You know, there's, there's a lot of different things going on there. Uh, we can do text layers, which I, I don't think we've got any text layers in there right now. We can look at the shapes. So let's turn that off. You see we've got a, you know, a color fill there, which is on a shape. And we'll go smart objects. So there's no smart objects currently inside this. So if you're looking for things and you can't find them, you just turn off the filter there and all your layers will show. So let's turn it back on. Of course, it defaults to what was going. There's other things we can do. We can go by effects. You know, if we've got some different effects there, we can find those. There's no effects on the, on this particular image. We can go by name. Now, notice I haven't named all these layers, um, but I have named some of the key ones, the ones that really are important to me. So I can actually do this by shadow. And it brings up the layers of the shadow. So we can turn these shadows on or off. So we turn them off there and we can see there. And there's the shadow layers that I painted in to this image. So it makes it quick and easy to do this. A lot of images I work in sometimes end up with hundreds of layers and it just makes it so much easier. So if we add a type layer here, let me just add this here and I'll just type in something. It'll just take a second for the engine to kick in. And we'll just type in Photoshop Cafe, probably misspelled it. Let's have a look here. We'll change the color of it. Let's set it to white and click OK. And we did. Let's do a CA, Photoshop Cafe, and we'll do a .com. Put a little plug in there. So we can do that, and then we hit the Control T for free transform. And let's increase the size of that. We're just going to drop this over in the corner here. Now, if we were filtering and we wanted to filter by attribute or kind, we can choose text, and it shows just the text layer. See that? So we could turn that off and hide it. Now we can go under another one, which I really like is attribute here. And this shows us we can find everything we want. We can find visible, locked, empty. So let's find empty layers. So there's an empty layer, there's nothing in it that could easily be deleted. See how quick and easy that was. We could look at, you know, invisible layers. 
So these are the layers we've turned off. There's our text layer. And uh, now as I hide that, notice they disappear. That's because I turned it on and we've got not visible showing. So if we turn the filter back off, those come back in again. So we can just turn that back on and we're just going to change that to visible. And let's actually just go back under kind. Let's go to text, find it, turn it off. So you can see how useful that is. Um, obviously we turned on something else that we didn't need to. So let me turn off our filters. I can hit the control key and I can select that layer there and I can hide that. There we go. So you can see there's a lot of really neat different attributes that we can search by. Um, there's a lot of other things in here that you're going to enjoy. Uh, one of the things, when we're actually getting back to type, let's turn the type on again and we'll grab our type layer here. If you look under our layers here with our different uh, options, we can start to you know make some changes as we always have, but you'll notice that there's a lot more things in here. The type engine has really been expanded and now we can do custom ligatures and, and a lot more in here. We've got our paragraph and then we can turn that down and uh, we've got justification, hyphenation. But let me show you something else that's kind of interesting that I am really actually kind of quite excited about myself is that if we go under our, our text here, let's go under our window. There we go, extensions. Uh, where are we? We've got our styles here. Look at this. We've got paragraph and character styles. So we can now set styles on our text. So that is just super, super useful. Um, and if you've ever done much type or much design work, you're going to absolutely love that. And of course, we can just show it in and out there. Um, there's other things that we could do. For example, let's turn off our type layer and let's just grab some layers here. Notice we've got these groups. We like to twirl these groups open and closed. Well, if we hold down the Alt key or the Option key, actually let's make it the Control key, notice that we can open and close all of these together. That's a really useful little, little thing we've got there. And then we can grab layers. So, for example, we could grab multiple layers here. Well, let me not turn that off. Let's grab these layers. And then if we want to do something, say, for example, let's add red for style. Notice we can do it to multiple layers at the same time. We can also lock them if we want to, you know, obviously we can link them. But we can also do things like we can lock our layers. We can do uh, different things here at once. We can link them. You can see we can merge them. There's a lot of different things we could do there. Um, Another thing we can, if we wanted, we could apply uh, drop shadows here. Uh, not drop shadows, sorry. We could apply adjustments. Um, and then we can also apply multiple layer styles. Obviously, we have to have layers that can have styles applied to them, selected. And then we can do that on multiple ones at the same time. We can change blend modes. Let's change our blend mode here. Let's change this to multiply. And notice that this layer turns to multiply. And so does this. So we're able to change these blend modes all at the same time instead of just one at a time. Um, so th I, I kind of like a lot of that. The other thing we can do is we can grab them. We can change opacity. So we can change the opacity there on more than one at the same time as well. So you can see that's, that's pretty neat. Um, so as you see there, there's a lot of new stuff there. Um, there's more stuff here in a 3D. There's stuff in video. There's uh, different types of styles and things like that. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to have a lot more videos on here. This is just kind of the introduction. So um, head over to photoshopcafe.com forward slash CS6 where we've got the launch site for Photoshop CS6 beta. And I've got more videos there and a full list of all the new features.